Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's introduce you to a new concept here that's still dealing with what we call equipotential surfaces. Here we have a uh, point charge, and so we can imagine that there are spherical shells around that point charge that represent different potentials, decreasing potentials who go farther out, and here's the equation where potential is equal to kq over r. Remember that k was equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, so we can write 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, times q over r, so it diminishes as 1 over r, the farther you go, the smaller the potential, considering of course that we have a positive charge at the center. Now here what I've done is I've written it in terms of a vector format so that the electric field here is equal to the negative gradient of the potential. What does that mean, the negative gradient? Well, the gradient represents the change in potential. So here as you can see that as the potential diminishes, the electric field also uh, changes. Um, so there's a relationship between the strength of the electric field and how the potential changes as well. Now, there's a relationship through what we call the gradient, and the gradient in terms of x, y, z can be represented like this, that the electric field can be um, equal to the negative derivative of the potential with respect to x in the x direction, the negative derivative of the potential with respect of uh, derivative of the potential with respect to y in the y direction and negative derivative of the potential with respect to z in the z direction that would be in the x, y, z coordinates. In terms of spherical coordinates, if there's no dependency on angle, only on radius, we can actually write it like this, that the electric field can be represented as a negative change in the potential with respect to r, and so that's kind of a way we can look at it, where we can say that as the potential changes in radius, we should be able to figure out what the electric field is in terms of that. So what this then becomes, this then says that E, the electric field, in the radial direction is equal to the negative gradient of the potential with respect to R. And so what is the potential now? Well, we know that the potential can be defined by this equation right here. So let's plug that in. So this is equal to the negative derivative with respect to R. This is really the partial derivative, but you know, in case there's only one variable, we can just think of it as a derivative. And that would be derivative of 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times q over r. All right, um, probably what we want to do is take the constant out and write that 1 over r is r to the negative 1. And uh, so that, of course, that would be in the r direction. We can't forget the unit vector here. I guess we should. Um, well, actually, let me leave it like that. This is actually a function of r and since I already defined the function of r, I no longer need that. I can just write it like that, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Okay, now what we want to do is take the derivative of that. So this is equal to the negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times q times the partial derivative with respect to r of r to the minus 1. So what is the derivative of r to the minus 1? Well, we subtract 1 from the exponent. Uh, we put that negative in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, so this is equal to minus times the minus becomes a plus, 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times q times r to the minus 2. Okay, so now that we take the partial derivative of that, we do have to, of course, put the unit vector along with that, and we probably want to put a unit vector there as well. All right, there we go. Now when we combine all that, we can see that this is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times 1 over r squared in the r direction. And that, of course, is known as the electric field around a unit charge, around a you know, charge, a small charge at the center of the region of interest. So this is a relationship between the electric field here and how the electric field is indicated as the change in the potential. It's a function of how fast the potential changes. If the potential changes quickly, like here, the electric field is strong. If the potential changes slowly out here, the electric field is weak. So here's an interesting relationship. Equipotential surfaces indicate how they're spaced, with, by how they're spaced out, it indicates how strong the electric field is. Again, if they're close together, strong electric field. If they're far apart, weaker electric field. And that's an indicated by this relationship between the change in the potential and the electric field. That's how we do that.